And um, Sam Tuke is working for Free Software Foundation Europe now for a long time now. And um, yeah, he's uh, one of our campaign managers and he will talk um, about his new campaign. He the first ones to know about it. So, so we have a problem, I think. Um, the problem is multifaceted, and it's that there are more people in this room, and there are more people at this conference and with conferences like this, that there are more people prepared to invest the time necessary to buy products with freedom and use services with freedom built in and work with organizations who are fighting for freedom. There aren't nearly enough people doing that, in our opinion. And we want to find out why um, and, and change the situation. So. There's been some amazing things happening in the last couple of years, um, specifically in the last uh, month or so. With the Occupy movement, I think it shows that uh, young people can get interested in things that, are, that have a big impact on their future lives. It shows that they can think into the future, they can think beyond brands and products, and, and they can think outside the boxes which are made for us um, and presented to us. And, and we in the free software community, the culture community, people who care about freedom in digital ways, digital realms, I think we need to try and engage with those crowds, engage with these young people in a way that we haven't before because Still, most of them aren't paying attention to what we do. Um, about three months ago at FSFB, we were talking about a new campaign, an idea that would appeal to a new audience in a different way to how we have before. We've got tons of information, both at FSFB and other charities, NGOs, lots of organizations have got great quality information out there about why it's important to stand up for your rights, what those rights are, how they're being taken away from us in some cases, how we can get them back. There's tons of organizations out there which can tell you, can tell us, can tell young people what we think they need to do, what they should do. Um, vote for this, sign this petition, pay for this, donate to that, turn up to this, hack on this, buy this, don't buy that. Um, sometimes that works, but it's not working a lot of the time, and we wanted to try something new. So this is the first year of first attempt at trying something a little bit different. And I'm interested to see what you guys think about it. So um, yeah, I work for FCP. I'm also a part-time hacker uh, on uh, free software services. I tend to talk quite fast, not today, because I've had a cold the last two days. So if I do speed up, caffeine kicks in. Somebody just do that, and I'll try and slow down. I'm a native English speaker and I tend to get faster the more I talk without being interrupted. So, yeah. Just a couple more images. This is a uh, map showing all the different Occupy camps that were recorded in the United States. There's quite a lot of them there. We have a similar map for our Document Freedom Day campaign. Not quite as many points, but we're not too far off. We can beat that. 
2013, yeah. This is the same statistics for Europe. It's pretty broad. It shows people in really far-flung places, not just signing a petition online or clicking like, having that like tracked and sold to the government, but it shows people, I mean, Occupy is generally involving people actually physically going somewhere and staying there. I mean, that's a hell of a commitment and a conviction. <coughs> I want to tap into that conviction. I know plenty of convicted people, but I want to know more who are young, more who are having their careers staring them in the face, um, and, and not and spending more time feeding energy into the process which is going to restrict their future than they are in feeding into the processes which is going to free their future. Um, yeah. And um, this is still an attitude which I come up against even after I've explained restrictions to people in Manchester. Apple's a really easy target, but obviously they're one of many, and they're just part of a trend. Um, but, yeah. Um, how to connect to people who have had some exposure to the restrictions that I'm going to be talking about in the rest of this talk. Um, who know about some of that stuff and still identify so strongly with these oppressors as I see them. How to kind of interrupt this, uh, this dialogue a little bit, this, this culture which allows these, to me, crazy things to happen, you know? The jailer's your best friend. Pay $1,000 to have the cuff slapped on me. <coughs> so, um, so the campaign is called uh, they don't want you to. Specifically, they don't want you. Dot to you. It's a URL. Um, and um, it's about. Uh, it's not about the NGO doing the work, really. It's about people doing the work and seeing where they want to take it. Um, seeing what's important to them, what direction they want to go in. Um, and. What we hope to achieve, um, at least on a small scale, is ending the tolerance um, of digital restrictions, which are absolutely ubiquitous. No, ubiquitous is any category of project or product. Even um, we want to uh, really challenge that tolerance. Want to rub it in people's faces a bit. You know, this is. You know, this is what you're prepared to do. What do you think about that? Give me a reaction, you know? Or force, force people to think about it a little bit. Because it's a pretty crazy thing, actually, tolerating a lot of the stuff that we do in the digital realm. And um, I kind of hope that if we make people think about it a bit, they might change their minds and have a di different reaction to usual, thinking about it directly for a change. Hmm. Yeah, it's about rebellion, in a way. Um, it is this campaign, it, it's designed with particularly young people and students in mind. That's a demographic which is very used to being rebellious and challenging authority, you'd hope. Um, that should be second nature to be taking things which are given, which are the norm, and saying, hey, I'm, I'm not so sure about this. To be asking questions that the rest of society can either afford not to, because they can buy their way out of it, or because they're working for a company and maybe, I don't know. Because all those reasons that we're prepared to put up with the inefficiencies and the little soul-destroying things that happen to us which stop us from doing what we want to. Students, come on. They shouldn't be doing that. We want to harness the rebellious spirit a bit. And um, as I say, not let them squirm out of questions of, you know, are, are, are you happy for this to happen? Are you happy to be restrained in this way? Are you happy to be treated like a fool? by technology companies again and again and again. Um, these companies, I mean, the companies that spend the most money on DRM and digital restrictions, there's lots of things they don't want us to know, students to know. But we want to ask, what do you want to know? What do you want to do? Um, they don't want you to do this. Now you know that they don't want you to do this. So what do you want? Get a reaction out of people. Hmm. 
So, as some of you may have already uh, been asking yourselves, how does negative campaigning fit into this? Because I've been talking about bad stuff so far. I'm not pitching a grand new solution yet. Um, and for very good reasons, people are very tense about negative campaigning. It's got a you know, problematic history. Um, this isn't about negative campaigning from our perspective. This isn't about us saying, you know, there's this horrible company with this particular brand and we need to focus on their particular efforts and stop what they're doing and no, no, no. It's not about that really. But it's about other people um, thinking about the negative things which they're experiencing. So it's, in a way it's negative campaigning by proxy to an extent. You could think of it that way. Or you could think of it about creating the space for positive campaigning to arise. Because we ultimately need demand from markets. We need demand from students. We need students to um, think before they invest three years, uh, okay, in Britain. It's a lot of money in Sweden. Maybe not. But invest um, three years worth of tuition fees in a course which will spend some of that on an iPad or a device which is really locked down. I mean, we need people to be thinking about these things. So there is, there is a definite need for people to realize the negative aspects of these restrictions. Um, and we're trying to stimulate people to talk about it themselves rather than push it down their throats, rather than say, this is one company that's bad. This is one product that's bad. It's more generic than that. It's about the, the broader restrictions that people face and getting them to talk about them themselves, getting them to think about them for themselves. Think, today, I had breakfast. How was I restricted before that? What niggled me today? What, what inhibited my productivity? What could I have done differently had I had complete digital freedom in my work day today? To really start asking themselves, because ultimately, there, there aren't enough of us freedom fighters to go and challenge every person one by one. Um, it's important that they're asking these, these questions of themselves. So, everything's been a bit fuzzy up to this point. Um, I'm going to keep it fuzzy for a second. We have two soft aims here. Um, one of them is to <laughs> increase discussion about restrictions, uh, specifically social networking, all those normal outlets, um, and get people to um, be sharing these experiences themselves, as I've just outlined. But secondly, we wanted to provide a different interface to ideas, philosophy, and information which is already out there. Because, yeah, we don't have enough hits uh, on our pages. I mean, there's people from lots of different organizations here. You probably all agree with me. We don't get enough hits for the information that we already have available. All those nice explanations of... Um, in the case of FSFB, why free software is important, why open standards are critical for digital participation, all that kind of thing. All this stuff about rights of consumer, uh, pro, pro consumer policies. We need a new interface to that, I think. And that's part of what we're trying to do here. Provide a new, slick, thin interface to content which already exists. And that interface is very targeted in that it doesn't say the same things that all the other stuff that we have does. Um, it presents it slightly differently, and by doing so, we hope to reach this alternative audience. So those are the soft aims. The hard aims, um, how we're going to measure the campaign success, will be, um, yeah, uh, how many um, how many participants end up in this in this conversation that we're uh, we're going to be creating. We'll be talking about that in the microblog campaign in a second, um, and also. We're going to be carefully measuring how many people um, start at one end and end at the other. So how many people will start a social media channel, maybe sharing a restriction, reading an article about something somebody else has posted, and how they link through what uh, they don't want to the website and convert into somebody who's actually doing something concretely. How many activists we're generating. We, we want to manufacture activists, ideally. At the very least, we want to get people reading the bad information, which we're trying mm -hmm. to manufacture uh, activists. And we have partner organizations, too, who are going to be helping us with this. We're going to be measuring through all these different outlets how many people um, end up actually participating in a campaign. 
And that will probably be the most useful metric um, for measuring how successful we are through this. So um, the methodology of uh, how we and, uh, hope to achieve these aims, we have campaign materials. We have a website I will bring up now. It's a little bit dark here, but uh, that's the current homepage. It's under development. It's in a Git repository. You can hack it. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, it's very small. It's very lightweight. It's designed to be that way. We started out with a very hackerish theme. We were thinking Pip Boy from uh, Fallout 3, or uh, you know, streaming matrix numbers. Like you know, it's cool to be hackerish, and you can undermine you know whatever these restraints and controls and break free. But I thought that was a little bit uh, narrow. So we broadened out a bit. Um, yeah, this is a nice leather background, or Creative Commons, of course. So, um, yeah, in the end we went for like a business card type design for the website. It's um, very brief. It's really supposed to be just touching base. You know, from here, move on. People aren't going to read any material we put up uh, more than a few seconds anyway, we expect, for this target audience. We're trying to get you know, people with short attention spans who want to do something. Start here, go somewhere. There's only two ways to go, resist or disobey. That's intentional. Um, so, yeah, that's the site. Um, we have, um, I'll show you where these links go a little bit later. Um, we have um, a microblog campaign uh, that we're going to be running over the course of uh, a month or more. And um, we're also going to be doing some guerrilla stickering. So, yeah. Some more information about the website. Um, this is the interface part, basically. This is the thin interface. This is the, the base to new material. Um, on, the, uh, on the other pages, there's, uh, there's links which reclassify information that we've already got. Um, this is multilingual uh, in the languages that we're particularly focusing on this year. Um, and it's also mobile friendly, or at least in my view, there's degrees of mobile friendliness. This is pretty mobile friendly, I think, especially for an NGO. Um, yeah. So that's the site. Just managing my cursor here. The microblog campaign will be on Identica and Twitter. Um, we'll be posting one message per day at the same time for about 30 days. Uh, each one will have a specific <coughs> format. Um, it'll be a, a restriction, which we think is an important one, um, which we've found. We've been crowdsourcing these restrictions for uh, about six weeks now, selected people. Um, with a link to an independent article about that restriction. So this isn't stuff we're writing about, it's you know, articles on uh, you know, Times and Huffington um, Post and all sorts of, all sorts of different resources. Um, some of the examples that we've got, I'll bring up. So yeah, using this format, the X's are just representing the short URLs. I don't know if you can read any of those, but these are examples of some of the messages that we're going to be sending out there, like little barbs to make people itch and scratch and think, yes, there are restrictions, I feel too. Well, I can think about something related that's affected me. Things like, they don't want you to make free phone calls over the internet, so they block it and force you to pay them instead, with a link to an article about that. Or, they don't want you to get online by tethering your phone to your PC, so they drive developers and then the government. Or, uh, they don't want you to find out how many people US Army drones are killing. Or, uh, they don't want you to know they've built backdoor access into your smartphone. This, uh, as I say, is going to be one of those posted per day for about 30 days. Um, it's hopefully going to be kickstarting hashtag stuff. And um, they're linked to from the uh, site a second ago. Yeah. So that's under one of the disobey buttons. Um, obviously, we're going to be monitoring that discussion. Uh, our partners are going to be helping us by contributing to this. We've got about uh, a reach of about 250,000 uh, citizens through two partners alone <laughs> on this campaign. So if they are re uh, retweeting, redenting, participating, hopefully we're going to be reaching a pretty broad audience with this. Um, yeah. So they'll, they'll be using the hashtag they don't want. And um, not all these, uh, not all the restrictions examples are going to be current necessarily, because it's not 
Um, most of them will be, but it's the point about them is to make people realize how much they've put up with over a period of time. It's not necessarily um, just heinous crimes being committed against the consumer today, but heinous crimes which we've suffered over the past five years. Um, so a couple of those uh, examples on, on the page back there on the Etherpad, which is public by the way, you can contribute to it, I'll give you the link at the end. Uh, a couple of those relate to stuff that's happened about 18 months ago, but it's still really important because it's documenting this stuff. If we don't keep people aware of uh, just how anti-consumer some of these people taking our money are, then we're doomed to repeat the cycle. So yeah, and um, we have the sticker component of the campaign, which is uh, some of these. Okay, so these were actual size when I uh, put them on the presentation, but yeah. They're but anyway, so this one's uh, about, I don't know, uh, this big, designed for billboards, allowing people to fill them in. Hoping people are going to get creative with them, put them on advertising, all sorts. Doesn't have to be tech related necessarily, but obviously that's what we're going for in the full camera. Um, we have a uh, smaller one, this is about, uh, I don't know. About the same size as my Mozilla sticker, um, designed for laptops. And we have a small <coughs> one here, which is exactly the same size as the, uh, the Windows certified logo. So, um, yeah, maybe people might choose to put those over some stickers. Maybe they might choose to put them over those stickers on machines they haven't yet purchased, but that would be good all now. But Gorilla stickering is, uh, is kind of a cool past time, and there's been quite a few articles about it, specifically in London on the underground, there's been a lot of cool stuff going on, so I'm hoping that we'll manage to ride the wave a little bit. Um, especially the, uh, the first one, which you can customise. I'm really looking forward to seeing what people do with that. Already had some really cool ideas for our fellowship group in Manchester. And um, yeah, these, uh, these stickers will be uh, free of charge, distributed to people. Um, that's the uh, on the street link that you saw a second ago, disobey on the street. Uh, that's, that's the sticker inside. And um, yeah, we're going to be sending uh, parcels of these to uh, certain university campuses that we've already got contact with. They're going to be redistributing them. So um, yeah, that's another way that you can help us out if you know a campus or group or society that you think would be up for distributing some of these packs. Then uh, please talk to me at the end. And uh, yeah, the final, uh, the, the fourth uh, component of the methodology are our partner organizations. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've already got about 250,000 people um, represented by two of the partners that we've, um, we've, we've agreed with. We've got the Electronic Frontier Foundation US and uh, Germany on board. The US are really keen on it. Um, we've got the Open Rights Group um, from Britain, which is one of the largest uh, digital rights organizations. And um, in fact, I can show you the way that the partners are currently look. Uh, yeah, and um, we've got two other organizations currently pending, and there are, there are, there are a few more, so um, yeah. This, uh, the state of this campaign is uh, going to be launching within a couple of weeks, we hope. Stickers are currently being printed, um, and uh, yeah, so this, this list will probably grow, um, but um, don't want to overwhelm visitors, you know, people who've never heard, they're really, you know, want a, a nice, short, punchy list, and ideally, I mean, all, each of these organizations has a slightly different angle on digital activism. And that's, you know, I think that's important because we don't want to overwhelm people with information that's too similar. I want somebody who's, um, you know, doing a master's thesis um, in medicine to feel that something, some, something will click somewhere along here. Uh, what we're asking for from our partners is that um, they have landing pages which will um, have a little bit of information about how how their work relates directly to this. Um, also, uh, we'll be linking to uh, campaigns and act activism which those organizations do which relates directly to this. For instance, in the case of FSFD, um, we have information about, uh, about our free or Android campaign, uh, which links directly to stuff they don't want you to know, because there's tons of stuff they don't want you to know if, uh, if you don't control your own smartphone. This is um, this demo that you're looking at here is on yeah it's on temporary hosting 
because we don't put the site up until everything's prepped. We want to launch the site like publicly at the same time that the microblog campaign goes live. That's the temporary URL for download XP.org, which is why the link didn't work just then. Um, but um, yeah, so it's really, you know, we're really trying to streamline the, the, uh, the, the funnel, the conversion rate, if you like. People coming in, they bring something that interests them, something about a device that they've got or a category of device that they're using, something maybe about Kindles or webcams or something like that. They follow the link back to the category <coughs> homepage, click on one of the two links at the bottom, end up going to a partner organization which has got information specific to resistance in that field, and then we can measure whether they actually end up becoming active, become an activist, and next year improve the process, so on and so forth. So, say that feedback loop, if you like. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as I say, it's going to be launching in a week or two. Um, uh, the links, let me just pick them up. Links at the bottom here, that will uh, give you a summary of, your, of links to ePads, uh, campaign information, source files, Git repositories, artwork. Um, if you have any cool ideas or restrictions, uh, like the ones I was mentioning earlier here, feel free to add them to the list. Uh, something, for instance, like they don't want you to know that they steal your Twitter photos and sell them as their own. So, if you know something like that, please wow. add them to the list. It will become part of the, uh, the daily send out for um, the microblog campaign. And um, yeah, if you want some free stickers, give me a number. If you uh, know a uh, campus which would uh, be a good target, be sympathetic. Got to Signs of Parliament or uh, just a political group or I don't know, uh, a law course that has some component that would be interested in this, please let us know. We'll send them a pack, get them distributed, get these stickers going up in different places, get some on the Kremlin, I don't know, wherever we can manage it. Um, and uh, yeah, we also need some translations into different languages. We've already got Polish and German covered, I think, but uh, any other native languages, like uh, like Swedish, for instance, if you think this would be, you'd be interested in. There's extremely little content like to actually translate on the homepage. It's mostly uh, pizzazz, so uh, wouldn't be much work involved. It's all in WebGen on the Git repository. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's my overview. I'm really keen if anybody has specific things to contribute right now, like example restrictions I could write down, add to the list right away, so you don't forget about it and go home and it never happens. Or um, yeah, I'll I'll take questions. No, but they're, they're like uh, YouTubers who, who've made it big. They mm. use them as icons. If you can uh, connect to one of these icons, it might spread faster. C connect how? Do you mean like uh, get them to endorse it or connect restrictions to them? Or oh, Some of them know about some of the restrictions already. Mm -hmm. but, um, they don't actually endorse it like you're doing here. They In endorsed Sorry, what do you mean? Um, like you make it visible. Mm -hmm. Most of them know about them, but they, they don't actually talk about it. Mm -hmm. So you think that maybe by harnessing uh, sort of a, a success icon um, for young people, uh, that'd be a way of capitalizing the uh, conversation? <coughs> yeah, because they won't actually look at something gray and white, black and white. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. They only look at the wow factor. If it catches them, mm -hmm. they stay there. That's the problem. Well, you know, I can send an email to Google and say, hey, do you think YouTube wants to endorse our campaign? No. <coughs> I mean, well, no, okay, individual YouTubers. Um, okay. Uh, people on Twitter who have large audiences. Uh, I mean, kind of just fine. Exactly, right. Okay. So, yeah, this is something that we, we're actually already been discussing getting um, some, uh, for instance, video and uh, uh, um, Photo bloggers involved in this. 
particularly in photographing cool uses of the, the stickers in ways which may be borderline legal. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally up for that. You suggest one name, sorry, there, Samari? Well, uh, Neil Gaiman, the right. author, uh, because he wow. yeah. commented so a lot on you know, this kind of thing. Yeah, well, we got Stephen Fry to be the face of Doctor Freedom Day last year. So, yeah. Indeed, and he's um, he's actually I think on the on the board of two of our partner organisations, yeah. so um, he's got a natural thing to endorse it. Yeah. But that's <coughs> very good ideas, especially if anybody has any uh, personal contacts with people. Feel free to. Yeah, that reminds me. If you can get um, write an op-ed at the sort of eve of you know soon before and <coughs> you're ready to roll that out, mm -hmm. they're really widely read. So you can get one maybe in the Guardian in, in the UK. See, an op-ed in the Guardian? Yeah, yeah. 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 And I mean, you've got to make it punchy and really make it provocative. So you know, it's something mm -hmm. worth working on for, for a while. But it's another really good avenue for getting the word out. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Um, it's, that's cool. Do you, uh, anybody want to help working on that? <laughs> do you have an experience with that? Uh, I, I do, I do, although I, I think that this one would really, you know, people coming out of some of these groups would be uh, best positioned, but I'd be happy to read mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and actually an op-ed <coughs> that has many eyes mm -hmm. uh, would be a, a good thing, but I'd be happy to comment on it and give advice once it's been uh, written. Cool. And I do have some contacts in, in the Guardian as well, so that, that could be very helpful. Great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I describe you as a lady in blue coat. <laughs> but that's accurate. Um, so what comes next? This is like a campaign for spreading a lot of information. Yeah. What, what, what is the call to action? What is the, the single thing that people will spend their five or ten minutes mm -hmm. time actually do after this action? Yeah, well, that, that's kind of one of the interesting things about, about this campaign. It, it doesn't have as much of an explicit call to action as other things, and that's very deliberate because we don't want to be telling... I mean. If we want to kill any rebellious spirit that we might succeed in generating, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to do that by saying, do this now, this is what you have to do, this is a successful thing to do. So, I mean, the one thing, the one call to action is to get people to, um, to think, to challenge uh, their beliefs. And that's really miasmic and uh, useless in a sales kind of way of thinking or, or whatever. Um, but that is kind of um, the soft goal, but the hard goals is going to be measured in metrics like conversions to people actually being involved in campaigns of either XFD or partner organizations. Like, for instance, if they sign a petition on the EFS website, that would be considered, I mean, that will be recorded as a success for this. And this is just the first year that we're doing it, so we're still kind of developing the campaign materials. And, um, yeah, so, so, so yeah, the, the calls to action are basically what, what I outlined. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. It's a tricky one because we don't want to really want to box people in, you know. Or we, we talked about this a lot, you know. We had tons of cool ideas. What what we could be saying, people, you, know, you need to do this. You know what I mean? Like T-shirt posters or whatever. Maybe stuff. you can like see yourselves as a gate to the possibilities uh, to the different organizations, right? Right. So so um, <coughs> if we get as much traffic to any one partner as to FSFD, for me, that's a perfect success because we're trying to get people more aware into the movement. And sort of you can see it as. Um, Expanding the market for digital activism, if you like, what we're trying to do with this. Rather than sell one particular product, the aim of this is to, to, to broaden the market. Um, as in the corruption of uh, I must say it's a really good campaign. Um, the thing I, I um, tend to, when I talk to people, uh, for example, who buy some iPad, mm -hmm. uh, and I tell them about the restrictions and the problem with using that, so that you reduce to a customer. Apple owns your device. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you quickly come into sort of a solution that where they expect me to present an alternative device mm -hmm. that works as well, but it's free, yeah. and I can't show them. Yeah, and uh, I think that we some of the subjects I've uh, listened to today uh, touches the subject that is the real problem, uh, and it's that. 
every person has to actively like choose not to run Windows and uninstall it, to, uh, or they have to mm -hmm. buy an Android and then make an active choice to free it. And it's uh, it's not an uh, exponential growth. It's it's not like uh, making some good product and selling it. Uh, the problem is more complex when you have to go to one person at a time and try to get them to uninstall something that works mm -hmm. and change it to maybe something that, ah, it, it's... Okay, so um, I forgot I should probably repeat the uh, questions for the microphone maybe. Yeah, the, the question for me was that uh, if you present only a problem but not a solution, mm -hmm. it could so be... So practical problems need practical dilemma. solutions and that's not what we're providing uh, in any of these campaign materials. Is that fair summary? So yeah, um, I agree uh, to an extent. Uh, I mean, yes, we need practical problems and practical solutions, but uh, that's not what we're trying to do here, basically. I mean, there's other people focusing on specific things. Um, you know, we have things on secure boot, we have, you know, people suing um, people for not allowing them to buy non-Windows machines, and, you know, FSV is involved in a lot of different stuff for a lot of specific issues. And um, a lot of those are very concrete, but most of those are very concrete things. And that is kind of, in a way, part of the problem that we're trying to address here, because it's not clear to somebody who isn't that technical or, hasn't, who, or who hasn't read around the subject well how lots of the different things that digital activists do relate to each other. Because working to undermine secure boot is not necessarily related in any way to the um, um, terms of service for Twitter, for instance, for, for a lot of people. I mean, it might be, I mean, it really is for me, it probably is for you, it's all about freedom of restrictions. But, um, you know, we really need to, to zoom out a bit, and, and it's very chicken and egg, too, right? I mean, we're not going to, you know, a group of geeks, I mean, even, even if 10,000 um, members of FSFB, for example, for one organization, bought, you know, laptops that were twice the price with Linux pre-installed, that still wouldn't be market enough to change the world. I mean, we, we have to have, be approaching these problems, you know, at, you know, at a very practical level, but also at a higher level, I think. And um, that's sort of what we're trying to do here, raise awareness in a very generic way, get people thinking about things, try to reframe the coolness of a lot of consumer electronics a bit. Um, and, um, I mean, for instance, like, when I was a student, somebody had told me that uh, there'd be $9 billion of uh, research and development money spent on um, DRM by the year 2012, I've been a bit shocked because I would have realized that that's going to be my money and money of people, you know, it's all consumer money, right? I mean, that would have changed the way I thought a little bit. And yes, it wouldn't mean necessarily that when I was looking for an iPad, I would know there was an option out there that was free. But, you know, it might make me question a bit more or, as I say, broaden the market for digital activism. So I completely agree with you, but um, I also think, you know, that's that we're addressing, we as a community here are trying to address those practical things already in many cases, and we're trying to do something a little bit different here. Well, there's the, the stickers and the way they talk about the day, and not specifying what to who they refer to. Uh -huh. I used to stay to conspiracy theories, and I, I'm worried that someone who sees one of the stickers and doesn't know what it is about might think that it must have been put up by some uh, crazy pinpoint hacks and then they just yeah. dismiss it. I think maybe you should try to make it clear from the start that this is about iPhones, not about some secret work government or something. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, that's a fair point. Um, I think a little bit of uh, an enigma is a good thing. Uh, I haven't seen many people with uh, tinfoil helmets active in my neighborhood. Maybe you have in yours. So, I mean, maybe, you know, that is an issue in different places. Um, I mean, I'm totally serious about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? If we're in a market that's full of whack jobs and we look like a whack job to speak, then yeah, might be a problem. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Um, I think, this, I mean, the stickers are designed for specific uses, right? They're designed, I mean, the largest one, which would be the most public one, which would be you know, potentially used in public places, allows you to write in what you want. So if you want to write in, they don't want you to know I'm an alien. Well, that's okay, I mean, you can do that. Um, but I imagine most people aren't going to do that. They're probably going to put something a bit more specific, maybe a bit more 
Interesting. <laughs> they're a bit more interesting to us. Um, most of the other ones, they're very particular form factors. You know, if you find it, I don't know, exactly over a over a um, over a particular company's logo, then you might think, okay, well that's related to te technology somehow because why did they make it exactly the same size and shape dimensions, you know, um, as that particular sticker? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe you're right. If you're right, we'll change it next year. So, um, Maybe you're, you're already yeah, well, exactly. That's 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 part of the. Uh, the the home page is very generic, right? These are these are generic, and they don't have links anywhere. But these these are specific, and the uh, Twitter and Medical pages will be full of concrete examples with concrete independent articles associated with them. Um, I mean, we've got an article here by CNN, we've got Huffington Post, we've got uh, the Chicago Sun-Times at the bottom, and we've got the Guardian here. Uh, this is Glenn Moody, you know, keynote speaker here since last year. Um, another Guardian, well, I read the Guardian quite a lot, but I do Guardian books. Um, this one from Telegraph, we get even more from the Daily Mail somewhere, that's from computerworld.com. So, you know, it's... That, that's our effort to, to ground it. The reason why there's not more specific information on the home page is because we want to draw people in. And um, yeah, it's, as I say, this was designed with young people in mind, and my understanding of, of how a young, people, a young person would behave would be more inquisitive than to reject it, but that's ridiculous generalizations, so we just have to see what happens, I guess. And we, you know, we're going to be monitoring metrics. Another quick point. Maybe some, as I've already mentioned, some kind of alternatives. Many of them are not as good in some sense, but that's just to show that there are some alternatives. I mean, someone will be inspired to make better alternatives because uh, many people think that yeah. there is exactly zero alternatives yeah. to Facebook. Yeah. And many people believe that. Just showing that there are some some other things. Yeah, um, I think that can be done in the in the work of the the partner pages. Like, um, for instance, there's some stuff about Android. There's stuff about the for instance, one of the stories is about the, uh, these images, you know, if you happen to, by mistake, have this image around your Samsung phone, it'll just, just wipe it, you know, it's like a backdoor type thing. Um, I mean, if you click uh, on one of the, the partner links, the first one, it'll take you to XFE, and it'll take you to the, uh, there's an overview there with, uh, I'll show you in a second, there's an overview there with, the, with links to re related campaigns, one of which is free or Android, that's, that's the top one. Um, yeah. Again, I'm careful. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm concerned not to funnel people with too much into one way or, or, or another. But um, hopefully, we've got that covered. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see. Just one. Uh, I mean, we we start this campaign. We don't own it. So everybody who writes with uh, with this hashtag and proposes a solution. I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, one thing is that there are partner organizations, and they also. <coughs> But actually, when you see, okay, that's happening, and you see other examples, I mean, everybody's allowed to participate. So if, uh, I mean, that, that's what we actually, we want, that some, uh, some students, pupils, also see something where, where it's restricted, and also post something with this hashtag, and also share it in other networks, in their, like, on Facebook, uh, perhaps make a video on YouTube, or whatever. I mean, everything they, they do, so that's fine. Uh -huh. There is. Right, so that's that's our landing page currently. Um, but yeah, I'll probably Okay, so next question. Yeah, I'm just gonna comment on this and what the guy just now said and the guy in the blue shirt. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, uh, this was sort of the problem in the early anonymous uh, or Occupy Wall uh, Street movement as well. You know, some people trying to drive their own thing or just sort of act, acting somewhat crazy but just like Twitter or uh, even uh, like general open source 
uh, these people sort of either adapt to even a broad collective uh, thing, or if, even if it's a specific, or they're sort of ignored and fall out of the movement anyway. So especially when it comes to hashtag and stuff like this, mm -hmm. and even customized stickers or whatever, you know, the most popular ones and the w ones that sound most sensible are the ones that's going to be uh, most dri distributed and are sort of at sea called them tin falls, uh, you know, uh, they they won't. That's not the problem. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I agree. With you. It reminds me a bit of um, there's a huge amount of media coverage of uh, some riots that we had in, in England um, last year, and uh, how social social media is really demonised by the national press. You know, have been used to spread as violence, blah blah blah. But an actual analysis afterwards of uh, of trends in, in this social media coverage during these riots was that the uh, the clean up hashtag, which was all about people actually cleaning up after the riots, that completely eclipsed any of the other more negative terms associated with um, coverage on, on social media. And that was a point that was completely missed by, by the mainstream media. It's only like one independent researcher. I see a language problem here. Uh, do you really want to target young people? Yeah. Uh, like my, my other 15 year old son, he's not going to read those cards on his own. We would need, you know, the company in Sweden to capture on it. Otherwise, because it's not, in, it's not in Swedish, you mean? Yeah. yeah. I also think uh, if, you're, if you want to translate these tweets to German, you need 500 characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not German, so I don't speak German. But, um, yeah, no, I think, I think that's a good point. Um, we're, sp we're particularly focusing on Poland, Germany, and the UK this time. And by focusing, I mean translations, trying to get translations and everything done that way. Um, that will probably mean separate accounts, separate microblog accounts for those languages. I, I'm relying on our translation team to solve the language lake issue, but I really do agree with you. And um, I mean, if um, it would actually be my preference to have the stickers in multi languages, but just because this is the first year we've done it, we <coughs> print like you know 50,000 stickers that whatever kind of couldn't shift. So, um, but I think the stickers are. are there. They're going to catch on because any kid can get the chance to have that. Okay. Well, okay, so you think it's the, particularly the longer. Yeah, because they want, if you want to go deep and really understand the issues, uh, yeah. you, need, you need localized uh, materials. Yeah. I wish someone would give a talk about a free software web based translation system that I could plug at this point, but I don't know anything about that. So, uh, cool. Thank you. Any other questions? Another question, but I guess that you have language problem. So yeah, again, if you want to, any Germans, any Swedes, you want to contribute some articles to that list, please do it. Because um, uh, I mean, mainly uh, the, the top contributors for the list we've got so far are um, uh, volunteers we've got in Manchester, which is where I'm from. Um, so they tend to be very English orientated, but really would welcome any of the tweets or um, uh, risk your links to articles in other languages. We could definitely use them. So um, I'll just bring up that page once more with the with the links. On it. Uh, yeah, so this is just a really quick section to put together. The address at the top. It's a, yeah, it is a little bit long. Um, public.pad.fsfe.org forward slash p forward slash a one you I can I'll be more than happy to write that down on a on business card or something if anyone anybody wants it. But that's just got links to all the different stuff. And as you can see, uh, there's compiled HTML and stuff if you want to pack around with the code or you're better at mobile development than I am, um, feel free to show me up. Okay, so I think we're out of time. Uh, thank you for all your questions. Um, I've been given the decapitation sign, so I think I'm there. Uh, so, yeah, good talk to you.